though Who has the Leslie Smith underdog pick? Who was the Mexican dude and the lesbian chick? Everybody say you mean, let's ball when the bean Who's that out there living they dream? Let's ball when the bean Who's that still smoking all the green? Let's ball and the bean Come on y'all, let me hear you scream Let's ball and the bean Welcome back to the show Not necessarily a results show, not necessarily a breakdown, but we're going to just throw some of that spaghetti at you. We're going to mix it all up and uh, go over what's been going over the verse. We know 223 is right around the corner. We got breakdowns in the back pocket, but we don't want to blow our load, I feel like, before we get there. Because, again, I'm barely hanging on. I got nothing left. I got nothing left. I, Every single promo I see, I'm like, don't do that, Tony. You're going to pop a rib. Don't do that. Don't eat that tiramisu. Back off. So, holding on, holding on. I'm sure you are with us here. Lesbo, how have you gone? I know you subscribed as of late to many different shows, Lesbo and the Beam being one of them. <laughs> but other than that, how have you been? I can't believe you put Tony's name in Tiramisu. When we oh, no, I said that's Habib. Oh, did I say Tony? I meant Habib. I'm <laughs> just so excited. Did I say Tony? <laughs> <laughs> did I just say Tony? <laughs> I know you didn't put my boy's name in with the Tiramisu. You know, he eating tacos. But no, Tony's so weird. Who knows what it is? It's probably baby food. So He's going Sean I really out. feel like I'm on a lone island <clears throat> of being a person that thinks Tony Ferguson's going to win still. I'm looking. I'm looking. I'm looking for a, somebody who believes with me. I, I know a few people that I've seen uh, back and forth. I couldn't tell you their names. They're Twitter people. Evil Twin is also on Tony. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's somebody good. That's somebody, like somebody who knows who knows what he's doing. Somebody who knows a little about the fight game. <laughs> somebody good. I respect it. Right, 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 right. And as of right now, I'm like 52% one way, 48% the other that they're going to win. That's coin flip of a fight. Come on, guys. Like, I'm not much off that. Exactly, right? So I'm like, I can wake up. I'm 62%. Whoa. For That's 10% higher than me. Mm -hmm. Either way, I'm just saying, and that's yeah. minuscule. So... Oh, there's just the promo that just got ran out. Did you recently see that for those two? I can't even believe it. I think they're doing a good job. They're doing a good job building Two weeks this out. Up. Two weeks out. They're, yes, they are. For It's April 7th. Um, I thought it was a little corny at times. Just the whole standing in the rain with a hammer in the air. Oh, regardless you know of what? Movies. I didn't see Tony and... I was Habibs. talking about JJ and Joanna. Oh, no, 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 no. Habib, that one dropped via lay break in here on that, B. Yeah. Oh, they're in. That's Tony's crazy. in the rain with a tire and a mallet. And all of <laughs> then he's in the rain holding it in the air, Thor is. But that's Tony. That's also Tony. It's a cool. In your house, you'll have that in, in 50 years and be like, yeah, that was me. But at the time. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, the Ioana JJ one is really cool, and I like the way they have that creepy. I love that is music a good one. Behind it. That is a good one. <laughs> and I think the way they're playing Rose, this is Rose's thing, and she should own it for here on out in her career. She doesn't want to say anything. She's not a shit talker. Mm -hmm. She really is somebody who spreads love. I do think that's this martial artist that we're seeing flow through the UFC now, you know, even uh, Ortega. This uh -huh. new spread the love person, I love it. I love it. Look at they're making me. I love it. <laughs> I love you. I love you, man. Yo, I love Yoel you. Romero, you got him. <laughs> Everybody now is Yoel, Everybody by the way. Is. On tweets, quick shout out though. Happy birthday to my boy DC. Ah, oh, good one. And I feel like somebody threw a I love you out there. If not, um, was it Derek Lewis versus Naganu? They're back and forth. Somebody threw an I love you. I think it was Lewis towards the Ganu. Like, we good. Because since we talked. Let's just get all in that. Yeah. They ended up talking more after we were breaking hey. it on the last show. Derek Lewis versus Francis Naganu. Derek Lewis replied back at Naganu after they went back and forth. And it's like, all right, it's time. No more sign. Let's sign the papers. They're both ready. They both said yes. Twitter's having a big impact on fights right now. Um,. It's really interesting if you see who gets the Twitter picks and who doesn't because there's other situations that were going on last night. I put you on the thread because it's getting hot. It's getting hot. But Francis Naganu 
across the board other than the actual documents as we know of, both guys are on board. It's whether the UFC says, you might not want that fight for either fighter because they're both hype trains and they both bring in the draws. So it's really interesting. Um, a person that they that the UFC is hiding right now from a lot of fighters is Darren, the white gorilla. Till. Till. <laughs> <laughs> like two, like, uh, oh! Darren Till is oh! being protected. Also in the Twitterverse as of last night, Kamara Usman is throwing all sorts of heat towards Darren. And Darren even broke a little bit at tweets, didn't he? He's like, yeah, I'm scared. I'm ready to face my fears. Okay, let's fight after like a day and a half worth of shit talk. One, and then the difference between us is that you think you're going to walk through me. I know you're going to be a rough fight. And this was Darren Till tweeting this back at Kamaru after saying, ducking season's open and you know what, Darren Till's the number one ducker. I'm really surprised. This is what I'm just flabbergasted at. Kamaru Usman is getting so much hate, so much fucking hate. I saw that. For winning his last fight. For winning his last fight. Because it was only 30%. Because it was only 30%. Handedly, <laughs> yeah, but handedly winning his last fight still. Yeah. And he's explained what it means still. And uh, the right. other thing, hardcore fans, they watch everything we watch. They know he's explained what that 30% means. And I've watched them tweet it as the rebuttal. Yes. I hate this, like, instant troll now of everything. How can you not appreciate what Kamaru Usman brings to the sport and... Talk shit about him on a winning streak. I would say those are le cage. Those are the casual fans. Those are the people it's that are like, like... It's people that I see that... I don't even like the term... Like, it's like people disagree with other people's opinion now and it's becoming hardcore casual. You're a hardcore. You're a casual. Like, it's a... Whoa. You, you know, <laughs> There's a hierarchy? Yeah! It's like this whole thing. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but everybody... I see everybody, and no offense. If you're on Twitter... Talking about MMA, mm -hmm. you're probably a hardcore. And if you're talking on yes. about Conor McGregor, you might be a casual. If you're talking about Flora Mayweather, you're probably a casual. If you're talking about Ronda, you might be a casual. I could say that for Till. Could I say that for Till? Could you say that for Till? Because he's br he's only had one fight where he really showed out. He got a decision versus Dalby. Like Darren Till got hot off of Donald Cerrone all of his heat. He took all of Cerrone's energy no, he and said people. It. He's been running off that energy. He, the whole and Usman's been saying it. It's the only person of caliber that Darren Till has beat handedly. This is what I think, everyone. You know what? Run on Darren Till. Run on Darren Till and give Lat B the opportunity to make cover. Well, who's been an underdog? A Leslie Smith Woo! underdog. Because I have him in that fight all day. Yeah, when the Lions come out for that, you better be betting steep on Usman regardless of where they're at, regardless of what weight they're at. Yeah. Kamaru Usman's going to wait. Remember when we saw him in Florida? Kamaru Usman oh, yeah. looks like a 205er. He, he looks, looks like a 205er. He's sitting far back and he goes, that's Kamaru Usman. And I'm like, he's way too no, big. that's not him. That's like Yoel Romero. <laughs> yep. I was like, that's not, there's no way. He's way too big. Totally was him. He is enormous. He's in humongous. So this whole white gorilla, Darren Till Stilla, you got another gorilla, no racist, that is going to be in there matching you strength for strength. But Till's also openly been saying on the Twitterverse, like, you better not go in there and snatch up a leg. You better fight me like a man. Oh. Also, red flag, just saying, yeah. put money early on Usman if you can. But this is probably why the fight's not going to get made. All props to Till for saying he's willing to take the fight. I do think the UFC is going to say, um, we're going to have this debut fight or fight there until in the main event because we need the main event to win. You know, it's one of those situations. They're stuttering all their hot fights too long whether it's Colby whether it's Darren whether it's like it's like these guys build up the steam for themselves and then it's just poof. <laughs> like it's just a big like like uh -huh. something heating up and just poof. there's no explosion because they're not doing anything with it you have a hype train Darren Till you have you know steam behind Cameron Usman you have steam behind Game Bread you are you, everyone even wants to see Mosfidal fight I just yep. come on get with it yep. if they have three months to train Give us the announcement of the fight three months. Let it build up for the smaller fights, too. It gives the opportunity for the whole thing to grow. It's making me kind of crazy. I'm like, what are you doing in there? I mean, they're doing good. We just talked about them doing the advertising for Khabib. Yeah, and doing spot on for one of the first times in a while. Yeah. The With all of these fights um, and everybody saying they're willing to fight anyone because that's a common phrasing now. A lot of fighters are saying anywhere, anytime, and then other fighters are calling them out and saying that's not true because you're not taking fights. And 
multiple other fighters themselves verified on Twitter that we know as a community are the actual people behind their Twitter have openly been like, I never turned down that fight. I never turned down that fight. And I don't, I think that they're both telling the truth because I feel like people like Kamaru Usman are submitting fight contracts to the gyms of these other fighters and the other fighters like Till don't even see that because their management says, I'm not going to take that fight. And Till doesn't know all they know, all Kamaru Usman knows is Till's not willing to sign the contract. You don't know if the man, you don't know where don't this you stops. you think it's just as likely that I'm Dana White and I come to you, you're Darren Till, and I'm like, I'm going to be real honest with you. I got guys like Game Bread, Usman turning down fights with you right now. You're hot stuff. I just want to let you sit back on the thing for a few months. Let me build a little heat behind your name, and then we're going to get you a big, big fight, kid. Just relax. Yep. Like, you're a big... People are... You know, th- like, where it just handedly comes off the tongue sure. of management somewhere, sure, sure. and it's not reality at all. Well, specifically with Game Bread, I feel like, here at Lappy, we're big props of that dude will fight anybody anywhere, and he has. He's fought guys up and down in weight, regardless. Guys, He tried to get a fight with Michael Bisping. Yeah. Masvidal's legit, but that's what the situation. Would you rather see Game Bread versus Bisping over Bisping Rockhold three? I think they got to do that because they're one and one. They got to do the third times. That they got to do that. Perfect retirement for Luke. Boom! Oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> all those Ralph Lauren picks though. He's hanging. I, he's they got a good program. Ralph Lauren's really setting him up. I think he might be like, okay, I can, I can get paid and just go take pictures with models. But he wouldn't get the contracts if he wasn't a fighter. It's a good point. Joe Ben has that exact same yeah. sitch. Yeah. That's a good good point. It's like part of the thing that makes But he's got to move to 205. He's got to move to 205. Yes. It's got to yes. 100%. Um, so with what we were saying earlier with the Twitter and the fights being declined, Masvidal supposedly turned out a fight versus Usman. And as we're saying, we don't feel like Masvidal would do that. So, did management didn't let him see it because there's multiple fighters that are just like, all I got to do is worry about training. Management does everything else. If I don't like how much I got, like, you know, they don't deal with any paperwork. They're just the tool to get the money. And I could see that that American top team is very structured in that way. A lot of those guys don't manage themselves. They got a tier of a complex, a stable that they get fights for people in do it differently. Um, you know I'm bummed still about American Top Team. Every time the name comes up, and maybe it's kind of this bad taste in my mouth for mm-hmm. them, it really bums me out about Michael Graves. I really thought that kid was going to be something. Didn't he get, like, the domestic violence? Yep. What a damn shame. I hope he, I hope he gets his fucking shit together. He just mm-hmm. seemed like he had I don't think he'll even... He, he like won't get back. They, UFC doesn't usually get those guys back in unless they had a big enough name and Graves was too much of a grinder. He wrestled too much. So there's really no reason. Like, he wasn't a striker. I don't feel like he was a wrestler. That's why he lost all the time. Interesting. Like, or he didn't lose all the time. Yeah, he did pretty good. I felt like he had good hands. Ask his wife. he lost against Usman. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Graham Greene. Yeah. Um, Other Twitter, other fight announcements. We've had a bunch what else has gone down? What else? Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm-hmm. I did see a few. Was it the heavyweight? Dan Kelly versus Tom Breeze at a fight night at the Echo Arena in Liverpool is already on the books. You know who I got? Every time. Every time. As long as he's willing to fight, I'm going to put him on my little card, Dan Woo! Kelly. That is bold. <laughs> Very bold. I might have to go the other way. Breeze looked pretty good as of late. <laughs> and Dan Kelly looked kind of old as of he late. He did look bad. I love Dan Kelly. He bad as I bad love bad. Dan Kelly. But um, other fights that have been put on the books as of late as well was Brian Barberina versus Jake Ellenberger. I thought Ellenberger's on a four-fight losing streak being knocked out pretty much three out of those four times. And Barberina's coming off of a loss. Um, I love Barberina. He's the consummate underdog he is super tough guy hard to get out of there grinding pace slows down a bit but not as much as people think um tough on the ground Ellenberger's a powerhouse we say power is usually the last thing to go and Ellenberger's had that power for a very long time but he's lost a step into many of his fights when Ellenberger goes night night it's a scary night night and there's a few fighters as well that keep getting fights a la Andre Arlovsky was just booked versus who? A hell of a striker. Tui Tui Tai Tui Vasa. Oh, yeah. 
And this is one of those things where I'm like, they're not doing Andre Arlovsky any type of a favor at all. Arlovsky's already lost multiple times via knockout. He has, I believe in his career, about 12 to 13, maybe 14 knockouts. And we've seen in boxing and other combative sports that that 20 mark, that one concussion is bad enough, but that 20 mark, there's no way you're not seeing heavy duty ramifications later on in life, quality of life immediately and long term. And it's Jake Ellenberger's in the same boat as Andre Arlovsky where I'm like, dude, I know you make a living here, but no, 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 no. You're going to have to get your butt wiped by somebody else before you're 60 years old. And I'm not joking. I'm not exaggerating. I'm a caregiver. I were, I've worked with people that were amateurs that had traumatic brain injury for the rest of their lives. They were 60 year old and you would have thought they were 90 because of that brain being in balance affects the entire nervous system, not just your cognitive ability. So be safe out there, guys. You guys can coach Ty Tuivas, not Ty, Andre Arlovsky, Jake Ellenberger. You can coach, you can do other stuff. You've got a big enough name. You know who I'm picking against. In that fight, Bruce Brian Barbarina and Andre Arlovsky. Um, scary, scary, scary. So, other fights that have been awarded or been put on the books. Real quick, Cynthia Calvillo was going to get a six-month. That would be reduced down to a three-month suspension. And then, freaking, was it Nevada Commission? Not even USADA? Was like, oh, we're just going to give her nine more months. Other than USADA. USADA was like... Okay, we're just going to do about three months when it all came down to brass tacks. And usually the state commission ends up following USADA's ruling. And for whatever reason, Nevada was just like, nope, we're going to tack on nine months. It's her nasty little attitude when she walked out of the ring during her last fight. Ooh, good call. I didn't think of that. I didn't but think I of think that. automatically. It was in Nevada during yep. her last fight, and yep. she walked out of the ring, and she's like, this is bullshit. I won that fight. This is effed up judging. Blah, 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 blah. So That's a great Right on call. TV as the camera followed her out. So it looked like the whole thing to me is kind of a shove in her face of acting like an a-hole. The whole thing. The whole uh -huh. entire thing. I would say probably 75% of the UFC roster has marijuana in their system at all times, and they decide when they want to pull it. True. I think it's the same as John Jones. I think it's the same as... There's a threshold This is the other marijuana. thing that you have to start thinking about these USADA organizations and every organization. And look at what we just saw with Icarus, or that whole movie. Is uh -huh. That whole thing is mob and run owned. You don't think... Uh, so, like, yeah. all of a sudden, your blood's in the hands of somebody that if you piss off, they can say you did whatever and have your whole career in their hand. So like, it's a sketchy... It's sketchy. With the mob, I think this translates well back into the tone verse Habib talk and Lesbo being Lesbo herself this is a very geared question just to try to get your thought process on this Habib has notorious ties with the Russian mobster slash political figure <laughs> we're gonna put Lesbo she talks about Russian mob in the <laughs> <laughs> that's some scary shit I gotta put so, it all on me so uh, Habib Nurmagomedov has had many a paycheck signed over by this person who is actually openly committed gay genocide in Russia. And there's multiple other athletes that have taken pictures with him. Um, but how do you feel like these fighters are essentially being sponsored by people with nefarious ties? Is that okay? Is that good? Is it's that not, like... It, I mean, I, in my guesstimate, I would imagine that I could say most Muslim men or women, for that matter, most Muslims don't agree with gay in my common sense brain. But in my same common sense brain, most Christians don't agree with gay. Most, <laughs> you know, it's not a, it's not a exclusivity to just them. And it's mm -hmm. the same as Yoel Romero with No Gay Jesus. <laughs> I'm not... A, a feminist in quotes or have that kind of thing and I'm not a rights activist and I see everything harmful to that women and gay people you don't have to email me and all this stuff but I also like the entertainment and beauty of a great fighter and I can see that an artist separate from his 
shortcomings. I can see that. And Yoel, for all intents and purposes, entertains the shit out of me, even with the garbage that may come out of his mouth that may put down gay people. Colby Covington. I don't agree with what he says about Brazil, Virginia. but I'm entertained. I'm in her uh-huh. like, are you not entertained? And so I and am so. entertained. And I can't, if I can enjoy it on one end when Colby Covington's mocking an entire country, I can't hate Yoel Romero for mocking gay people. It just has to be. I I can't hate Dana White because he comes out and says women will never be in the UFC. Uh-huh. They'll never be good fighters. They'll never be, uh, you know. Look at where we're at now. Yeah, look at where we're at. Uh-huh. Look at, I, I remember Jerry Lewis saying there's no such thing as a funny woman. Like, and look where we're at now. Look True. at these women that have. So, you know, you just decide what side of history you want to be on. And I can't have anything to do with that. And I try not to over... But I guess what Khabib thinks. I already kind of would know that going into our meeting, that he would think I'm... If there's a hell. Yeah. Like, I know he's not a Buddhist. Like, a Buddhist wouldn't really true. care what I'm doing. True, true, true. Like, and, if I meet Rose, I know she doesn't give a shit about either of our sexualities. Agreed. You know what I mean? Right, but right, if right, we meet right. Khabib, your beard might not be enough. <laughs> you know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. what the rules are. It's Me like, neither. So. Me neither. But that was a long ju- diatribe and dangerous, like dangerous. It is walking, walking along I had to, line. Like, yeah, there was like gators on both sides, and I had to like. <laughs> doop, doop, it's hard doop, holding doop, these gators down. <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> it was a whole different one. That's what I want my picture to be. It's holding gators by the nose. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, a little off topic, but we got a confirmation of what ended up happening to Harpquas when he fell out. Uh, Harpquas Nazrat. He actually, it wasn't a weight cut. We were assuming, making myself look like an asshole, that it was a weight cut issue just like uh, who was it Marshman had, and it wasn't. He actually had an eye infection. Uh, did you see the photo going around? No. So the eye infection actually, Ooh. the doctor came and looked he at died. it the morning of. He, he said, <laughs> going to have straight clothes. He wiped doo doo in his eye. He didn't wipe, so, he got. Little doo doo in he his hand. Officially came out and said it's not pink eye. <laughs> Everybody comes <laughs> Everybody out and says that. <laughs> Everyone. Everyone's just like, dang, you didn't it wash your hands. Pink eye, didn't get doo doo in my eye. So it was an eye infection, but either way, it was working its way or had the potential to work to his brain due to how close it is to his brain. So that's why he wasn't able to take. Because if it gets cut, I'll tell then, you. Woo. Pink eye. If you get pink eye, and I have never had it. Knock on wood. <laughs> um, if you get pink eye, you can't go. I, but I've worked in restaurants in my life, and people have shown up, and I have sent them right Hell out. Oh, yeah. Because that shit is contagious. Super so contagious. So if you had pink eye, you can't wrestle me. Yeah, I agree. You can't fight me, because then I'm going to get pink eye, and you can get that shit in other well, orifices of your body. Not only you. Anybody else who's been on that mat. So true. So you got to wash your ass, and, and you got to wash like, your mats. the first or second fight of the night. Yeah, <laughs> it was the first. It would have been the first fight of the night. Yeah, you got pink eye. Hashtag, don't pay, baby. Gaslam is dirty old... Probably working out with Yo Romero. Got an old poo-poo <laughs> eye. Hag stool gay. <laughs> yo, we just love to talk about Yo as of late. Because he, he is, is entertainment. He is entertainment right now. And he's, like, charming, and he's his own... Yoel is the one that they should be entire and they have so many different personalities in the UFC they should be pushing them on every aspect of the game and to grow this sport they should be just if home and gardens they should be like hmm who do we have over here that's a cook Pina Pina Juliana go on that show and then they're like hmm what other shows do we got history channel Shevchenko go shoot on the history channel with the Duck Dynasty guys who else we got they should be putting their fighters into every aspect of the... Uh, not GSP talking about dinosaurs. Not that at all, because that was one of the biggest flops of all time. Speak. They shouldn't have I to agree. Talk. Stoic. Yeah, he should just sit quietly mm-hmm. and we, like, sit And there. when they ask him, he just be, I thinking about aliens. Yeah. That's he it. Shouldn't, he should just wear sunglasses and sit there cold. Tony Ferguson. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Tony says things, but I yeah. love, my favorite thing that Tony does is on the stare off, how he always frightens Dana with uh-huh. the, Joe. woo! Yeah. And Dana waits for it, and then right when he thinks it's not going to happen, it's like Robin's song on the uh-huh. Howard Stern show. With, we had to get there. It's been the talk of the town. I think it's publicity. I think it's just marketing. 
but there's been officially line set. It was only a matter of time till we talked about Conor McGregor versus Mayweather in MMA. The line's been set. Everybody sees it going Mayweather or McGregor's way, I mean. But to me, I'm just not even going to jump on that bullshit because Mayweather knows how to use the internet and how to get his name in there regardless because he's making money off these tweets. He's making money off. He always knows how to just say just enough to be in there. Um, a lot of people are speculating other fights, but... Uh, Wouldn't it be worth it for him to get his license the and license. never anything happen with it? Financially, what does it cost him That's to what do I'm that? saying. And he gets million... Every sports network's talking about Mayweather going to MMA. Never has to have a fight in it at all whatsoever. But there's multiple other celebrities that are jumping on this bandwagon as well. We've seen Dante, or who is that? Jordan Taylor. Boxers all coming over as well and saying, um, hey... I'd like to make a run in the UFC. I'd like to try. We've already had pro boxers coming to the UFC. Bring them in. Bring them in. Because I'm going to make some money moves. Make some money. There's going to be money belayed against a lot of these guys. Other than, you heard it here first. This is, I already picture how I see the fight going between Mayweather and McGregor. All right, let's hear it. I feel like first leg kick, Connor's going to keep Floyd away. And he's going to take apart his legs. The first leg kick, Floyd's going to be like, holy <laughs> This is a different game. Holy shit. No one in practice kicked me this hard. No one. Yep. I didn't even know what this is like. Yep. The second leg kick's going to turn Floyd all the way around. But he's going to stay on that like tiptoe of a foot. The third leg kick, he's going to try to block it. And he's going to be thinking of it. But it ain't going to be a leg kick. It's going to be a head kick. I think I don't think Connor. Everybody that's like it's going to be a choke or ground game. Uh -huh. I think he doesn't even need to get to the fourth aspect of like get there. I think he can stay right on the outside and pick him apart in less than a minute with just three kicks. I think three Connor kicks to a boxer. It's a whole different game. It is a whole. I think different a better game. fight, hands down, to me, Connor Floyd's boring, and I am dead serious about this. And I want everyone to really think about this. If you say you're a feminist, if you say you're pro woman, you want this fight too. Chris Cyborg versus <laughs> fucking Floyd. <laughs> I would love that. At one forty-five. Are you kidding? Love, you, love, love, love that. Maybe one fifty. If you want to make it extra fair for Chris, you have him coming at one fifty. <laughs> I would love to see that fight all the way around. Better than Connor. Yes, it would make it would It'd sell more. more. It would make it would sell more. It would sell. It would more. sell so Everyone, much more. Everyone, even people not interested in yeah. MMA at all yeah. or boxing, would tune in. Um, There'd be like butch old. Like, it, that's exactly what I was about to say. Thank you, because I was about to go there. <laughs> yeah. Like, yep, good yep, yep, shit. Yep. I don't even give a shit. Like, there, it would be something. You'd see freaking women haters that they just want to tune in to watch a woman get her ass beat down. You see, like, it would be something. It would be something. All over the globe. To go back into all of these boxers that are now starting to look potentially into the MMA world, um, just because the boxing world, a lot of people have claimed, has been corrupt due to nefarious ties for a long time now. And UFC has its own, but a lot of boxers looking to get into the sport. And we've talked about it a bit here, but I'm going to put it on wood. This is... Going to happen. I've been looking at a lot of footage as of late. And we know specifically that TJ Dillashaw has been working with Lomachenko for a while. Now, Lomachenko has not been able to get fights. He got his last fight that he had was undefeated gold medalist who couldn't get out of the fourth round or sixth round with him because Lomachenko's too good. TJ Dillashaw's using some of that footwork. When I really started to look back at TJ's last win over D, um, Cody. And then I got to see some footage of Lomachenko and, and doing some MMA sparring, doing some MMA drills and workouts. He's young enough and he has the level of boxing as well as takedown defense that that's actually a fighter that would do better than a lot of these other fake guys. Lomachenko hits in very boxing. hard. In MMA. In MMA. In oh, MMA. Lomachenko Go in coming, MMA. He's coming over okay. because he's been training with TJ for a while yeah. and he's been training drills, but he's not talking about it. But he's having so much trouble finding fights that his only option is going to go to MMA. Literally, there's he can't find any fights, and the fights he can't find, they're just not making tons of money the for The second him. that Connor, it has to be more than just Connor, but Connor, Nate, Connor, like once it gets into this echelon of MMA fighters and they're just being a glimpse to the one percenter athletes, once mm -hmm. they see, oh, you can make money in UFC. 
or MMA. Yep. It, you're you're going to see this just influx of what happens when you get somebody with, I don't know, Herschel Walker's athleticism. Oh, inside. yeah. We've been you waiting know, like, for it. Yeah, We've yeah. been waiting for so it. So it's like we are so – and we have John Jones, and that's where how much he's above. And John Jones is – probably the least of the athletes of his siblings. Right. Isn't that mind-blowing? Yeah, because they're both in the NFL where they're making multi-million dollar contracts. Um, we're still evolving. We're still in its I love tween it. stages of MMA. If I could even say that, we might still be like grade schoolers. Uh, Marion Renew just calls for a top contender fight versus Ketlin Vieira. <laughs> Renew does not deserve Caitlyn right now where caitlyn has been the people she's been beating. I think Renew's off of I have maybe to do our public night. service right. announcement for Jesse Jess, um, who's a fighter. And she had her house broken into, and however... She just debuted in the UFC and beat PVZ. PVZ I broke her so. arm over Jesse Jess's, moved over from oh, Australia. Yes, 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 yep. yes. Okay, so the Las Vegas Municipal Police Department found Prince, this is what she tweeted out 21 hours ago, have a name and an address for one of the men who robbed us and killed Dwight, which Dwight is her cat, which is super friggin' sad to get her house broken into, but they said there's no point arresting him, in quotes, for just a burglary. Ha um, and then they, the burglar actually took $30,000 and murdered her cat, so that deserves an arrest. Um, so we're just small potatoes. We're growing. We're growing potatoes, but we small potatoes. But maybe Ariel, Brennan, I don't even know, uh, friggin' these other guys can mm -hmm. say something too. And maybe we can, you know, people can send an email to the Las Vegas Police Department. I know they got a lot going on. and We know they like to do their job. We know how they are great at solving cases and making sense and being... <laughs> clairvoyant <laughs> to the public. They got a new commissioner or lead investigator, right? Because the other one passed away. I'm just saying. I mean... We don't even need to talk so, about that. We've uh, talked about the Russians, and now we're going to open this <laughs> door. What are we doing? We need to start a different ourselves. series Who of are podcasts. We, Alex Jones? <laughs> we need to start a different podcast. That's for damn sure. Anyway, so um, you guys can follow at Miss Jesse Jess, and um, maybe everybody can gang up or get together in a peaceful protest and get some, uh, what would that be? Uh, I don't know. What would the word be for her? Justice. For uh -huh. her. Hashtag justice Just for Dwight. That's justice what the actual for hashtag Jess. is. It took me a long time to think Justice of for Jesse Jess. Yeah, and her cat Dwight. So make sure you guys do that and we can move on. Interesting, fact, uh, interesting tidbit that we were talking about before we got to casting here was actually these fighters are being robbed because people know you're going to be in Vegas for oh, yeah. a week. We wanted to say this to fighters. A little, uh, this is a public service announcement to, to the fighters. fighters. And maybe to everybody. Just have some common sense. Go Just on. get a house sitter. Just or don't this. leave your stuff. Get a house sitter. Everybody, for these fighters, a regular civilian, the public, doesn't need to know when you go on vacation. They don't need to know when you go on a cruise. Right. They don't need to know. Just maybe keep it mum until you get well, back in town. Well, that's where I think they can see. do that, but they just have to get a house sitter, unfortunately. Because and maybe people let Instagram Facebook too much. know they're getting a house sitter. Like, let maybe other, other people, let know, other as people well. know there's going to be somebody in their house. But these fighters, it's they go out of town and everybody knows because of the publicity where they're going to be and how long they're going to be gone. At least. Happened to Rhonda. Happened to Rhonda. And happened she, to. Pettis, happened to uh, Jesse Jess, happened to, this it's is happened a thing that we're seeing happen very frequently mm -hmm. to fighters, and not only that, if you look into Hollywood, they do the same thing with their movie schedules. They know when these actors and actresses are shooting, to. and they go into their house and rob their houses. They know when these musicians are going on tour, which is right. all very similar shit. So, just have a little wherewithal, and maybe don't put your, I mean, they advertise for themselves, like, I'm a comedian, I'm going to be here, 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 here. So then it's like you're going to be out of town here, 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 here. So, yeah, get a house sitter. Get an alarm system. Get some kind of deterrent for your... I definitely think a house sitter would be the easiest way, especially if you have pets. I don't know where that cat was, how long it was going to be there, but I'm assuming she'd be gone for a few days. Like, the food's not going to be refilled? I don't know. I got a couple pets. They got to do that every morning, so... Maybe it's self-watering and feeding. Oh, that might be it with a big old cat box. Either way... It's just PSA, the more you know. Lat B. Ding, ding, ding. ding. <laughs>
other of the last things that we wanted to get on. Um, I know there was a poignant, and it's totally blanking me, hop for ass. We went over that. We went over the PSA fights going through. I don't know if I necessarily have too much more. We Are we going to end up having a Sunday show with this big break of cards? Are we going to end up bringing some exclusive content? I think we have to. As long as the UFC universe keeps on chugging, we got to... As long as people want to, and if you want to, you should be subscribing, letting us know what avenue you like. Maybe uh, people like some of these conspiracy thoughts. Let us know. Maybe there's uh, ways that <laughs> yeah, we can have another one. really one. talk about anything. We got two, what, two more weeks to kill before... And maybe it's good for all of us. Maybe we can't even handle it if we would go, we need the time to reflect. And yeah, what do you want us to talk about? We're even thinking of doing um, short videos on a fighter. We were thinking about doing um, our first breakdown on Brian T. City. Um, but if you think we should do someone different, we want to just do a little short video where we just go through a person and we were thinking, what were we going to, what makes them dangerous? <laughs> going through and breaking down just one fighter in a good chunk. I like that. I love. I think that definitely. I'm I don't know. We have a options. couple ideas. We have and we're some open ideas. to suggestions, so you right. can tweet us at Lesbo and the Bean on Twitter or email us at Lesbo and the Bean at Gmail. I think you can find all that stuff at Lesbo and the Bean dot com. But yeah, I don't know if there is anything else going on. I know the second we get off this, I'm gonna be like, I can't believe we didn't talk breaking. about breaking. It happens every single I know, show. So I'm trying to look real quick. <laughs> <laughs> any breaking news on the Twitterverse. Uh, Augusto Mendez earlier today pumped for being on steroids where he didn't necessarily look like he was on the juice, but still prevalent in our sport. Do not think that USADA is changed it. It's just changed the way that people get around these things. So we still got our eyes on some of these fighters. We're still watching to make sure that they're, you know, staying so as clean Fox as possible. Fox Sports... Put Connor vs. Nate 2 at number one UFC greatest fight. Trash. That's not right. <laughs> That's not right. There's so many other fights that are unbelievable. Um, That's up there. It brought a lot of publicity to our sport, but you got to go obviously with the Griffin vs. Um, who's is Bonner? That one really set it on the map, but then there's tons of... Gio's, P. Sarah's, Weidman, Do you love the Silva? idea, because I kind of love it, that I've heard rumors um, that maybe Eddie Alvarez is healthy and, and waiting in case Khabib or Tony fall out? I think that fighters as of late have started to do that in general. I think it's so smart. It is very smart. And especially a big name like that. Because that makes you the instant interim. So the speculation as well as 223 other conspiracies that we got going on here right at the end of our show is Connor is going to be stripped at 223. And they're going to actually officially make the that bout the belt that day. Or it'll be the interim and then if it, they're going to strip Connor if he doesn't have a fight signed by that date. That's also been underground rumblings that Connor's getting stripped at 223. Well, that's the whole thing that everyone's so pissed is why is he not stripped already? Are you going to put your all your eggs of that big monster mm -hmm. in Khabib's basket who makes one of every six fights if we're going to be conservative? No, you're not going to. And it's nothing to do with Khabib, but it's just... The proof is in the pudding, and Connor is whatever you want to say about him not being a defender of his title. There was a time for Connor that he was fighting whenever, whoever, short notice, yep. monsters on short notice. Like Chad Mendez on short notice is no joke. On that Chad Mendez, I was finding out not long ago that. Uh, Chad Mendez on juice short notice? That's no joke. <laughs> Chad Mendez on two weeks' notice where he was out camping and there was four other fights on the books. Three of those other fighters were in camps to have fights. Connor's camp specifically picked Mendez because he didn't have a training camp. So they knew he was going to gas. Like, it was specific. It's been happening. And the winner write the rule books. The winners write the books on themselves. And Connor wasn't telling you that they specifically chose Chad. But now Ali and these managers are coming out and opening the dirty laundry, which I absolutely love. But I also am like, damn, you guys are dirty as fuck. Damn, you guys are shady. I, there is still to, as far, I, 
I feel like what Connor's done is really impressive. Yeah. And the question I ask myself every day is, what would I do after I already had a hundred million dollars? What would I put my? But then the question I know, I'm not a fighter, but I love things that I love. And even if they were hard to do, and I had a hundred million dollars, even if I took a year off, two years off, I'm eventually going to go back and do that hard thing, even if it's hard and dangerous. Even if I'm a rock climber, I'm eventually, people are like, why is she doing that? She has a hundred million dollars. And I feel like for adrenaline junkies, what could be a better adrenaline spike than getting in that octagon? Every fighter says it in most combat sports or martial arts. It's just, you can't mimic that competition factor. You can't mimic being under the bright lights and no amount of money can do that. Like, you just got to be in there and fight. And it's addictive. Cowboy. It's addictive. Cowboy says it the most. Yeah, I all the time. Know. Like, whatever. I'd fight for free if it wasn't, if people weren't what willing else? to pay me. Is there anything else you want to lay out? Edgar Swanson, too, in the works? I hate it. Edgar's way too... They, he just got finished dramatically. He's later on in his career. He's taking a punishment. Frankie, Edgar needs to take a good amount of time between fights. If not, make it one of his last few fights. I just, he's made a title run too many times. It's Dominic Edgar. Cruz says he can beat Floyd Mayweather with one arm in the octagon. <laughs> Nick Newell can too. Oh, that's a good one. So Nick Newell, a lot of people have been coming out. I was telling you about the young man with one arm. Is 14 oh, and yeah, one yeah, only yeah. Asagechi. He's been putting out a lot of good publicity out there as well. Showing um, how he can block a head kick. Because he only has his arm to about here. He can use it for grappling right to about the mid forearm. Um, he's got a couple little digits on there too. It's... Either way, he's showing. <laughs> <laughs> That's rude. Sorry. <laughs> Get my strong arm. That's my strong arm. Yeah. I'll use my strong arm. Yeah. It's horrible. It's horrible. But uh, was that scary movie? Scary. <laughs> That's horrible. You need help. You need help. <laughs> but Nick Newell's a badass. Only person that has lost to that he's lost to is Justin Gaethje, and it's because Justin Gaethje. Um, Came at him like he would any other fighter. But most fighters do. Because as soon as Newell throws those first couple punches with that good arm and good kicks, he's got two perfectly good legs. He definitely will put it on you. And this is the thing that's happened in uh, collegiate wrestling as well before I've seen it. Where there was a young man when I was wrestling that didn't have both of his legs at birth. So That would almost seem harder. Well... For, to wrestle him. Yes, that's exactly like it. He, he actually went to state... All center of gravity. He went and got like second and third of state... A few years in a row. Hard to shoot on him. You have to pretty much throw him. But the fact that he didn't have his two legs, which are biggest muscles of your body, he had the upper body of 170, 185 pounder going against 103 pounders. Yeah. Very and he true. was able to just grab them up, cinch them up, and kids would cry. And he'd just be like, sorry, kid, got to pin you. Like, I'm going to state. But he'd be wrestling freshman as a senior, just jacked, too, because he'd get up and do all sorts of he crazy. He didn't have that dead weight of his leg. Yeah, he'd, he'd always be in his wheelchair. Arm. Huge jacked up guy. So Nick Newell can fight at a little bit lower of a weight class. We've seen it in other wrestling aspects as well where that factors. So he's a little bit bigger. Than some of these guys. So it makes up. There's a balance there. And he's never been fully outclassed in any of his fights. Um, and he, Nick Newell's fought top level competition. I love that Gaethje's come at himself and said, this guy needs to be in the UFC. And UFC has a really weird thing that they have to do right now. It's, okay, if we let him, does Diego Sanchez guy that beat Diego, does he get a shot? No. <laughs> the <town's guy. laughs> I don't I just think we have to end it there. I think that's a good place to end it. So make sure you're liking and subscribing. You can hit every button everywhere and we love it and we love you guys. Thank you. Let's move me! Who has the Leslie Smith underdog pick? Who was the Mexican dude and the lesbian chick? Everybody say you mean Lesbo when the bean.